Our ability to run and to keep active at age 17 is equal to age 65. Our ancestors caught the prey not by outrunning the antelope, but by outenduring the antelope. Because we can sweat through our pores, animals have to sweat through their mouths. So our ancestors would run after the animals for hours, and eventually the prey would fall over, literally out of breath, and we would take them. That's how we caught it. It was called endurance hunting. So you have to be able to hunt, even in your 60s. That's how long people used to live if they survived childhood back then. So you had, if you're less than 65, the endurance of a 17 year old. Don't ever forget that. And if you don't feel that way, it's because of things that you've done with your lifestyle, oftentimes. You have the ability to turn around. So I guess I'll just end my talk. <laughs> I had one slide left, it's okay. My last slide is only going to be about the fact that it's really about automation. What this entire program is about, uh, no matter what we're talking about, is about you making it easy to do the right thing. What Healthcore represents, and what your wonderful city has embraced, and your, your mayor with a tremendous vision and a passion for this, is supporting and pushing and thrusting out there, uh, is the fact that we have the ability ourselves to make a difference. We don't have to look for others to do it for us. And if we make it easy to do the right thing, people will follow in that path. And I bless you all for making a little time in the afternoon. I don't know, Mayor, if we have, we have, we have time for one or two questions. Three questions. So please shout the questions out if you got them. I, I love hearing questions. I learn from them. And I think a lot of these ideas back to kind of get them on the show. So who's that question? Got one? You should have moved. You, go ahead. Getting rid of the mid-fat after it's formed, how is it, is it difficult? Well, let me talk to the women for a second. First, when you go through menopause, the ovaries don't just make estrogen, they make testosterone. And without testosterone, it's hard to build muscle mass. So it's very important that sometimes we want to make sure their hormones are in gear in order to be able to get the muscle mass. If you don't have muscles, you don't have anything churning out the fat. No matter how much you diet, it's hard to keep up. And, but the major contributor of belly fat is sugar in our diet. You can't eat anything in America anymore that's packaged without having to be careful about sugar in it. Because it's so often added. Sugar and salt are very addictive. They stimulate our brains and crack cocaine. And so we have to be cautious about packaged products. That's why if it doesn't have a food label, it's much better for you in general. And you live in, you know, I travel the entire country, as the mayor mentioned, and there are very few places in the country that have, and that have access to fresh agricultural produce the way you do. And for you to be so far down the list on the obesity line, that is very concerning to me. Because you have the tip at your finger tool to make this happen. So, rule of thumb, no added sugar. Just cut out all the sugars, and you will effortlessly, I guarantee you, lose a lot of the belly fat. You might not get back to your playing weight the way you were when you were 18 years of age. I mean, you might only have, you know, if, 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 if you wait for a thin model, but you will lose a lot of that belly fat. And I'll tell you this, you lose that belly fat, you also lose the diabetes most of the time. Not, not once in a while, most of the time the diabetes goes away, most of the time the blood pressure gets better, most of the time the cholesterol normalizes. So why would you want to take medications and treat problems and paint over the crack in the foundation of your health when you actually have a much better way of doing it on your own? Yes, ma'am, shout it out. I grew up in school, uh, I, mean, I just turned 50 this summer, so like many of you, uh, like, like, like many of you, uh, I had a very different experience in school. How, how many of you of my generation walked to school? Uh, almost everybody, right? You know, 60% of our generation walked to school. You know what the number is today? 10%. 10%. So, it's not just in school athletics, although that's a big issue. But we just have made sports hard to do. Now, 90% of the U.S. population lives within two miles of a park. So you can't get kids, I'm sorry, you can't get kids outside uh, if we can if it'd be planned out that way. But if you're orchestrating a play date from 345 to 415, it doesn't count. I think we are mortgaging our future when we take schools athletic programs down. They were incredibly important to me. And it's, it's, not just, it's not just about burning off calories. And I'll say this to the kids, I learned most of my leadership training in sports, playing on teams. I learned conflict resolution, playing with kids. I learned negotiation, playing sports with kids. And we have actually done a lot of research for this newest book that Dennis mentioned, You Raising Your Child, which is all about development and psychology of children. And, and I, we have spent all of our time trying to understand what it is that makes kids really thrive. And 
And I think we think a lot of time getting kids to learn the math, which, you know, I'm a scientist. I, the kids have to admire scientists and want to be scientists, I think, or they do that. But if they don't have an opportunity to, to learn the life skills through playing, then it hurts them. And sports is one of the best ways for that to occur. Which is why, at least in our family, we've got four children. It's an important part of all their lives. And we started Health Corps in part because we realized that most of the places, in fact, I can't think of a school that they, I shouldn't say that because there are so many schools now, but most of the schools we don't have sports programs to catch the kids who don't make the varsity. So if you go to Sac High or, or, or you know, any of the major great schools in the secondary area and you make the varsity basketball team, well, you're going to get a lot of mentoring. Right? Kevin probably got a lot of really good human beings around and helping it. But the kid who doesn't make the team falls through the cracks. So what Health Corps tries to do is to catch those kids and make it okay and celebrate you where you are and make it okay that, that you have a different vantage point in that, but it's still going to be part of your life. Because humans, and I mentioned this earlier, have one major item that predicts our longevity. Humans do not die of cancer and heart disease primarily. If I got rid of all the cancer in America, you know how much longer we live? 2.8 years. What kills us is frailty. What kills us is no longer having the strength to undergo the stresses of an illness. So we get cold from the herd. That's why people who are physically active live a lot longer. It's the more predictor of longevity. One last question. How do you start a health care program? Thank you. Uh, so health care is based on two basic in instincts that we all have. It's good policy and it's good politics. So we have wonderful leaders. And we, when we look for cities to go into, what we look for are strong mayors. We got one. Strong school leadership. We have a wonderful principal here at Ted Powell. But, uh, but you put those two together, that's the recipe. The rest of it's much, much more readily done as long as you've got people who are passionate about this happening. And then once you have that, you need to partner that with funding. The money sometimes comes from the cities, from the states. Some of it comes from a, a local uh, you know, business people who have a passion for giving back, a civil responsibility to, to make this community a living better. And we are indebted to the Walnut Board in this community uh, who always did a, a leadership role in the civic community of Sacramento, stepping up and supporting us. So thank you very much. and we will make Sacramento grow because this is, this is the way the program is grown nationwide. It's true in New York, where we started. It's true in New Jersey, where uh, you know, I got my kids in school. It's true in Philadelphia, where I grew up. It's true in Dallas, in Houston, in Miami, L.A., and, and, and a lot of places in between. Uh, and we are starting many of these schools up because people recognize that we're going to have to make this happen on our own. And those kids go out there and, and they're activists and they change our communities we just have to kick back and once again recognize that, that our kids are the future and they always will be. Thank you all.